Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're going to be upgrading this awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5. I'm right now in the middle of actively filming a video replacing the CPU but as I had a couple of other things that I wanted to upgrade we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna mix this up it's gonna be bloody difficult to figure out which footage is for which but I want to expand the server with some more RAM as well as a, um, a battery or this is actually a flash capacitors this is capacitors for the flash in the rate controller so we're gonna do that as well the x3650 model 5 um, can handle up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM which is a lot it has 24 slots for memory in here so you can kind of gather that you need to put in some rather big blocks to do that you actually need to put in 64 gigabyte blocks if you want to go up that high they are rather expensive so we're not going to go quite that high today i only have one cpu in this server and that means that out of the 24 slots for memory i will only be able to use the first 12 or the 12 slots that are reserved for this cpu the other 12 slots belong to the other cpu and those i'm not going to be able to be using before i expand the server with another cpu it's very important to balance your memory in the server like um, each of the cpus has some memory channels so you need to put the same amount of memory in each of those memory channels as well as if you have two cpus you also want those two cpus to have the same amount of memory otherwise the system is going to be unbalanced and you can see a rather big decrease in your performance if you really mess up the memory configuration and um, and have an unbalanced system i believe i did a video way back where yeah i forget how many percents but i could have gone with a cpu that was almost half the price if i had balanced the memory instead i'm going to be upgrading this right now it has five blocks in it so it's actually unbalanced it has four blocks of 16 gigabytes and it has one that i don't remember how big was if it's a 16 or if it's an 8 so we're gonna have a look at that we are gonna be putting in four extra and these are gonna be 64 gigabyte blocks so that's 256 plus 64 I'm gonna take out that one block the CPU has four memory channels and each of these memory channels they have room for three blocks of memory if you put in one block in each of those four channels you're good to go the server can handle memory all the way up to 2400 megahertz so it will be able to run that if you have some good memory that can handle 2400 megahertz it can do that the cpu that we just put in also good with 2400 megahertz no problem whatsoever if you put in another block in each of the memory channels then then block number one and number two will be occupied in each of the four channels well you will still be able to handle 2400 megahertz on the model 5 here if you then go ahead and you add even one more three blocks in each of the four channels then you actually get a penalty there are two different kinds of ram that you can put in here there is L dims and there is R dims. L dims are the larger ones of the two load reduced memory blocks. They're not as fast as R dims, but they're way bigger. Um, I think R dims are we at 32 gigabytes at the moment or something like that. Um, where L dims are, I think the biggest are 226 gigabytes you can get right now. You need to talk to the bank before you order one of those. With the R dims, you actually get a bigger penalty you are reduced down to 1866 megahertz with the l dims you are reduced down to 2133 megahertz so in that regard l dims are a little bit better than r dims but if everything is about speed and it's not the amount well r dims are a little bit faster it's not by much let's get on with it let's put in the ram now that i've been rambling on let's take out the ram that is in here there are five blocks each of these white slots is the first block in each of the memory channels. So let's start by taking those out. It must be jumpy RAM. Uh, these are some Kingston blocks that my good friend Jim um, kind of bought uh, on error 
uh, these are registrated RAM and he needed unregistrated RAM. Then there is the original RAM block, which I couldn't remember how big it was. It's actually a 16 gigabyte block, so it's it's not bad. It's a genuine Lenovo one. So we are gonna be putting in some other RAM blocks there. They are here and they are 64 gigabyte memory blocks, product of China. So we are gonna put those in, 64, 64 gigabytes, and they are 2400 and they are L blocks. So I'm gonna be putting those in. There. That means that we have now 256 gigabytes of memory installed in the system and only the first memory slot occupied. Uh, so right now I would be able to run 2400 megahertz on this. Uh, maximum RAM speed, maximum speed on the server, new CPU, awesome fast. I have these, it's it, kind of a bloody shame to waste them. 16 gigabyte, but they are only, only and only, there are 2133 megahertz, which means that when I put these in, the system will see that this is a lower RAM and the speed will be reduced down to 2133 megahertz because that's the highest frequency these RAM blocks can handle. So it's, well, I could really go and say, I'm gonna use these for something else, but we are just messing around. So we will just put these in as well. And they go in slot number two of each of the memory channels. And that is just right next to slot number one. So we'll be putting those in. And then we have just this original Lenovo uh, 16 gigabyte block. All of this memory is not Lenovo memory. So if there is a problem with this server and I was to use the warranty, which there is still on this server, I would have to um, to have this block around to show Lenovo that, well, the server is still damaged even if I put in the original RAM block here. And uh, yeah, so I have to keep this around because a genuine Lenovo RAM block has Lenovo warranty on it. So uh, yeah, we'll put that somewhere safe. On to the next thing. We can put in the plastic thingy now. There. Good. New memory. So, um, I put in this extension on my RAID controller. Uh, oh, this isn't part of it. And it needs a battery. It actually doesn't need a battery. It needs a capacitor. And I bought some of those. I went ahead and I bought um, probably this one first. It's capacitors. They have a capacity and different from batteries, they don't go bad as fast. You can charge and discharge these millions of times. I'm not sure if that's correct, but well, you can do it a lot more than you can do it with batteries. Even lithium ion batteries, this will outlast lithium ion batteries. So why are you using capacitors suddenly? The normal battery packs for these rate controllers were supposed to keep the rate controller good for about 72 hours. So if um, the server was writing data to the disks, power was cut in the middle, the data that had reached the rate controller would be safe in the rate controller because the rate controller would, would keep power on the cache through a battery. Um, this new rate controller extension is a, um, it's still a cache controller, but it's flashbacked, which means that there is cache on it and then there's a flash part of it. So what happens is, if the server is in the middle of doing something important or non-important, the server really doesn't know what it's doing, and it loses power, data in the cache on the RAID controller will be written down to flash on the RAID controller, and then it will be safe. Flash is like your USB key, or USB pin, or an SD card. Uh, it's not a physical SD card, it's one of these chips. So, but to do that, it needs power for a little bit to actually be able to handle that. So when the power drops, it will feel, oh, I lost power. So it's gonna take power from the battery pack and it's gonna use that power to empty out the cache 
memory which will lose data as soon as power goes out and it will write that down to the flash controller or the flash part on the rate controller extension card here i need a battery for a couple of seconds to do that i'm not sure how long that takes but not 72 hours so therefore we have gone from lithium ion batteries to a capacitor here this is 13.5 volt 6.4 Fahrenheit. we're going to be putting that in i was buying this online and uh, thank you very much to my patrons they have uh, supported this um and i got the wrong one i uh, mistakenly bought the one for the m4 uh, it has this white connector here and it, it just doesn't fit in this connector down here it's um, it's too big um, not by much but there's another connector on it and uh, so i had to go and buy another one with another connector i could have gotten this cable just but i found that afterwards and just the cable was about half the price the pictures that i saw online with this all the connectors was black so when i when this arrived i got really pissed that they sent me the wrong one and i was just about to to complain about that when i figured out wait a minute those two blocks aren't the same i just moved over here so i can actually see what i'm doing so there we are up here in the plastic there is actually small cages in here to put batteries in there unfortunately they're hard to see uh, just take this up again you can kind of see there is these uh, pockets in there and that's to put a battery in so we're just going to put this in one of the middle ones is that a middle one that's that's kind of a middle one there let's put that in and does it take some of the cable as well that would be nice don't want all that hanging around if that ain't good so with that in place we are ready to put in the, the graphics card and the 10g networking card as well so let's get rid of that thing put that out of the way okay that will be okay we are ready to put the lid on there we are. On the top of the server there is all these explanations of how to replace the CPU here. There is also how the memory goes in here. So I sure do hope that I did it right. 1, 4, 9, 12, 2, 5, 8, 11. Um, looks about right. Put the server back in and we're gonna power it and we're gonna see if everything is as expected. I sure do hope so. Okay, I have mounted the cables back here and the server is it powered on by itself. So um, yeah, let's go see if it sees everything. Okay, there is another lesson to be learned. Can you see this orange LED over here? You're not supposed to mix R-dim with L-dim. I just did that. <sighs> I'm gonna have to take out all the R-dims and leave in the L-dims. So I'm gonna be stuck with 256 gigabytes of memory that's not a problem problem is that i have to disconnect everything and take it out so but by the magic of filming you don't have to wait for that okay so here in the lenovo press about the x3650 model 5 you can kind of see what i meant here is the section about r dims and here are um lr dims okay uh, i forgot the r um, so if we put in our dims we can maximum get up to about 768 gigabytes with 32 gigabyte blocks and uh, if we do that we will be down to 1866 megahertz whereas if we do lr dims we can go up 1.5 gigabytes of memory with 64 gigabyte blocks and we don't get as much of a penalty there we go down to 2133 megahertz memory bus speed so there's that and up here 
mixing different types of memory, RDIM and LR DIMMs is not supported, and that was what I messed up with. So uh, yeah, my fault. So here we are at the computer, and the system has powered up. And if we go in here and we check the memory right there, we will find that we now have four blocks of memory, and there is 64 gigabytes. Awesome. Let's just check number one here. Get some hardware information on that. It tells us that we are well speed. We should be able to transfer with about eight gigabytes per second, and the memory is running at 2400 megahertz. Awesome. So let's see what Proxmox says. Um, let's go down to the host and get a summary. It should see exactly the same thing. We suddenly have 251 gigabytes of memory available there. So um, quite an improvement there. The rate controller cache memory is a bit harder to see. We would have to go into the BIOS to actually see that it sees that. Yeah, you learn something new every day. I messed this one up um, just because I forgot. I actually knew because Lenovo does deliver these servers with RDIMs which are the best RAM. I forgot about that. I was very, very lucky when I got that RAM from my buddy Jim, that that was also RDIMs, so they worked. Now that I have LR DIMMs, they're not able to work together. They still work, but not together. So yeah, I messed that one up, but we, um, we got the server upgraded by quite a bit almost four times as much memory in there. Yeah, we went from 80 gigabytes to 256 gigabytes in the server, and we put in that capacitor to keep the rate controller expansion. It's kind of an expansion card with the cache controller on it. So the cache controller handles all the, the data for the rate controller, and if it loses power, well, it writes data into the flash, and it just needs enough power to do that, so we put in a capacitor bank instead of a lithium-ion battery. Those lithium-ion batteries, they have a tendency to go bad. Some years later, uh, capacitors, they keep on going way, way, way longer. So, awesome. I have to remind myself next time that I have the server out and are in the BIOS, I have, I have a setting, it doesn't have to, I don't have to overrule the always right back now. The right back is, when you're sending data to the hard drives, the rate controller will immediately just approve that it has the data, it's writing back. You can override that because it's not supposed to do that when you don't have a battery. You are supposed to write through because that's the safest way. It, it writes through the rate controller and it, it, it only approves it when the data is safe on the disks. And I overruled that in an earlier video now it's all good because now I have the battery capacitor in place. We're good to go. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.